Cool. Well, thank you to our Think Big session for, uh, we have these every other week for the package team. So we have a few things to cover in the agenda today. Um, Ian was going to go first, but I think we could save, save his for next. Um, I could read, Nathan is not attending, so I could read this one. He had an idea to make it ridiculously easy to set up an NPM package that works with GitLab's registry. And there's some ideas that have been discussed in that possible issue and then a, a possible implementation. Um, Nick, did you want to talk through maybe the, the possible implementation? Yeah, sure, I can do that. Uh, let me just open it up. So yeah, um, this was another proof of concept that I did. I had an idea to make this easy, is that we could add the npm rc file as an option for, from the uh, project presenter page, which has a bunch of options for other different types of files there, such as like readmes and change logs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so my idea was that if we could detect that there was a package JSON file at the top level, then we could offer this as an option to add, to create this file in the exact same way as you would do with any of these other files. The only difference being is that we would pre-populate the NPMRC file with some information. So basically, uh, what's in the docs currently. Uh, the only thing that we wouldn't populate in there is the authorization or um, access token or something like that. It's a bit like, it's, I don't feel that's quite the right place to do it. We did have a little bit of a discussion about, about that in the um, issue that Nathan raised. Um, so the issue that I created, I was able to do a PAC of this. It was fairly easy um, to get it up and running. You can see a GIF of that in action. Uh, the only thing is, is that it's basically all backend work and I wasn't entirely sure where you would store the, the pre-populated content. So on none of the other files, as far as I could see, would have any kind of pre-populated content. Uh, it would just open up the editor with a blank file for the user to put in whatever they wanted. Um, so as part of the POC, I just did that in line, but obviously that probably isn't the right place for it. Uh, and the other part of the POC that I didn't do is detect whether or not there was uh, a package JSON file at the top level. So the button would basically always appear. Um, now I don't think those are insurmountable problems at all. I think they're pretty easy to get over. Just need to make a few decisions there. But yeah, so that that was that was the follow up idea. There were some other interesting ideas explored in Nathan's issue as well. Um, the most interesting one being a command line tool to assist you in constructing these files, or perhaps um, you run this command line tool inside of a project and it would automatically create this file for you. Um, which is something which I think Azure does or um, Microsoft Azure offers. Uh, so I thought that was another interesting idea as well that we could explore. With, with the, and with the same thing, we would be able to extend to every package manager basically, right? Instead of the npmrc, it could be the settings.xml for Maven or, or um, the Conan file, uh, the Conan settings file as well. Yeah, I don't see why not. The, the only thing I would say with the, the Maven and possibly the Conan one as well is that I suspect that there's a stronger chance that that file might exist before, like you wouldn't create it through this interface. Like it might exist as part of like creating a, uh, a project as opposed to, so the NPM RC file is, is solely to um, give NPM some behavioral changes. Whereas the other two files, like the settings XML and, and potentially whatever Conan uses could, I, I don't know for sure, but I suspect that they're more project related in the sense that they describe more than just the behavior of the package manager. I, I suspect they're the equivalent of package.json as opposed to NPM RC. Ah, so maybe maybe. can uh, correct me there. That does sound right, I, at least for me then, but maybe. Steve knows for Conan. Um, I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I think, sorry, I no, think it's ahead. because uh, npm is sold as a package manager and registry together, while the others are more like a package manager and the registry is an endpoint or a URL, and so that you need an override for npm to do what you want them to do, while the others are already configurable inside could so we, could we do that an MVC where we don't auto populate the, all of the information for them and we just we leave it sort of templatized 
So we, we detect when there's a package JSON file, then we populate that add npm rc button. And then instead of having it pre-populated with everything, it just is like they have to fill in some information. Do you think that would be still valuable or? or, or? Um, I mean, that's certainly easier. I, don't, I question whether or not it's valuable. I, I suspect it loses quite a lot of the value by not having uh, the, the things pre-populated there. I mean, the alternative is that these buttons um, are just links. They're not actual, oh, well, they, they don't actually have to lead to functionality. They can just link off to a different page. So alternatively, like you could potentially do something where for say Maven, um, it would create an MR where it applies the changes to your uh, settings.xml as opposed to creating it from scratch. That's a cool idea too. Anyone else, uh, anything on that idea? It's not that, I mean, this sounds pretty actionable, right, Nick? I mean, it sounds like there's some backend work. We haven't added weights or anything yet, but uh, does it seem like a, a reasonable issue from the backend perspective? I think, yeah, I mean, like, it, it certainly seems like a, a defined issue and it, like there's nothing like super crazy going on necessarily that like is, would need to be completely new. Um, I'm just checking to see if I can. Uh, so the the piece that you need to populate is pretty much the um, the package name. Really, that's all you really need from the um, package JSON. And then you can use the CI token and the CI. Um, uh, yeah, the CI token for the um, OAuth token. No, you need a personal access token then for npm to work. I think the CI token uh, merge request just went through, so it should ah, be okay. Able to that's work true. Now. Like I think it just went through, so <laughs> 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 so it might not might, might not be totally usable yet. Um, the other thing I was thinking about is uh, because with the idea of you know like making it very easy to create the package is so this adds the npmrc. It'd be cool if so. I think about on an issue. How you've got like you can create a comment and then you can say like comment and close. It'd be cool if it was like a you know create npm rc file and then create npm rc file and build package, which would kick off a pipeline to then build the package based off of that. Um, but that would also require, I guess, adding or modifying the um, the GitLab CI file which could be a little more complicated if it already exists. Uh, on this line, I think uh, there are other solutions that actually do something like that, and they are able to identify which kind of command you need to run to build the type of packages, because there are some patterns. For example, if you use Nuxt, okay, that's not for packages, but it still builds something. That's the command that you always run. So if they actually have it on the package.json, maybe it's not impossible to do, but definitely it's another step. Okay, anything else on uh, this topic? I just have a quick question for everyone. If we come up with these new ideas and we're in the middle of building them and it's really exciting, is there, and this could just be me new at GitLab, is there a like canary version that we could actually go out and test with users and be like, hey, we built this thing. Can we validate that it's actually helpful for you instead of trying to kind of make that assumption ahead of time? I haven't seen anything like that yet, but things do go on canary and we do have plenty of uh, NPM developers at the company and, and access to customers. Maybe we could do some kind of like demo or, or screen test with them. That, would, that could be cool. So yeah, I feel like go to, if you go to next.gitlab.com, you can change over to the next version, which is the thing, the install running on Canary. So that's how you could manage that. Couldn't we use a feature flag that's scoped to a given project so that uh, the feature is only enabled for a given project. But would it pass maintainer check, something which is some that like violates some of our rules, like chaining API call like we are doing now, even with I, the feature flag? 
Yeah, I was going to say, we, like, one of the things we try to do, and not to, not to try, and I'm not trying to shut down the conversation, but I think this is definitely falls in the bracket. We wrote something, and it's customer value, and we're not 100% sure, release it, and if people don't like it, we can iterate on it. Or if it doesn't quite do what they expect, then we can iterate on it. We're probably trying to channel Sid's um, <laughs> um, iteration uh, AMA slash office hours yesterday of like, hey, let's just get it out. And if people don't like it, we can improve or change once it's out. I mean, I think the only reason we'd want to, I like the idea of testing it with users, uh, but maybe it just means releasing it and, and targeting particular users to get feedback. Um, like actively rather than just kind of waiting until we hear back from people. Um, I don't know. That would be my thought. Uh, one of the things that, that uh, Sid said yesterday on the call that was really interesting to me in the, in the iteration office hours was not necessarily, don't necessarily worry about delivering value, but deliver something that could be useful. So that's, that was the sort of the biggest mind shift that he gave me on the call yesterday was, yeah, it's good to deliver value, but you don't always have to. You could deliver the tiniest, tiniest sliver of value, and that's okay. So that that was a really uh, interesting perspective for me because I was I I think I've always been saying, well, as long as it delivers value, as long as it's an improvement, we should do it. But that even well, that, it pushed me even I, further. <laughs> well, the example that I thought was the best of that, and thanks for reminding me of that too, Tim, because that was pretty good. Um, was just change the documentation to make the documentation about the feature you haven't released, and then people will go, hey, where's this thing? And we go, well, we didn't do it yet. And they go, well, we don't like the thing that you said here in the documentation. They're like, you know, add the API and nothing else, add the front end and nothing else, like in order to get more things out there. Um, if you have a chance to watch that, um, uh, I, I would argue that Tim starred quite heavily in that conversation, did a great job. Thanks, I was trying not to be too nervous, but. <laughs> All right, let's 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 move on to uh, Ian because I want to make sure we have time to go through some of the designs that he's been turning out. So Ian, do you want to walk us through the round robin design review? Definitely. So I'm really excited because we've been talking about what we could be doing with Package and I feel like this is the first time we, we have a thing to talk about. So I'm, I'm very excited um, and I wanted to take the opportunity to get everyone's feedback and there's quite a few of us on the call um, and we are an async company, so a lot of the in-depth feedback should be coming from there. So I wanted to run a quick trial of a round robin that I've done before. And so I'll show you a design. And basically what I'd like for you to do is look at the design, and then in order on the agenda, give one piece of feedback. It could be something positive, it could be something negative, it could build on somebody else's comments. Um, provide that one piece of feedback, and then we'll move on to the next person. We'll keep going around in a circle until everyone has given enough feedback or we run out of time. Um, one thing to call out, you can plus one somebody else's idea and that doesn't count as your, your required contribution. You can say, oh, Nico had this really great comment. I agree with that. And then also I have this piece of feedback. Um, I would like to time box it just so we don't accidentally consume all of Think Big with uh, design, which we've done before. So. If I could nominate Dan, who is really good at this, for stopping us at 10 after the hour um, as he shrinks and shrivels into a nothingness. Um, so that we either run out of time or we run out of feedback, um, just to make sure we still have time to discuss some of the other things. Um, and if we do run out of feedback, I have a second design to go over. Um, so we'll just dive in. I know that's not a, necessarily the most instruction, but I think it's enough and I have to figure out how to share the right thing. Sketch. All right, can everyone see a design? Some thumbs up would be helpful. Sweet, uh, I, all right. I see a list of packages. Is that what you're intending to share? That's exactly what I'm intending to show. You have validated stage one of the design, Dan. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right, so. I'm gonna give a quick overview. This is the package registry page that contains all of the different packages a registry could have. In this example, they have NPM and Conan and Maven packages all in one group. Um, the goal is that this should serve as a better way to show users the latest information about their packages as opposed to the table view that we kind of offer now. Um, 
quick run through of things that I have changed on the design and then we can dive right into the feedback. So I want to make that as fast as we can. I've kind of changed the structure of the navigation. I've kind of changed this over to registries because we contain two types of registries. One of them is the container registry, which has Docker images, which are very unique. And then package registry, which is more similar, but different languages as a second option. Right now we just say list. And that's already confused a couple of users as to what like this list means. And they don't know until they, they dive in. Uh, from here, we have the breadcrumb, which kind of shows you what project and the registries and et cetera that you're in. We give a tab level view so you can sort, these are all the NPM, these are the Maven, these are the Conan. If you notice there's an indicator that says I have nine Maven packages. Don't necessarily get hung up on the fact that there's nine of them because I'm not very good at counting, so I know there's less than nine. Um, but they're just there to show you as a quick view, there's this many of this type of package. I've added the ability to filter by name. We have this sorting component, so I've kind of given it a better home. Each package gets an icon that tells you what kind of package it is. We talk about the namespace, which I know is something unique to NPM, so I'm curious about how Maven, Conan, and the others could respond to this. There is a package name. I've added the ability to verify a package. This comes directly from user feedback. They want, as a DevOps manager, to say, everybody that is using a package, this is the version of the package we want you to use. It has been verified by some person. For the first, I've just kind of said it's a maintainer has the authority to say this is verified. And then we show what the different tags are. We have a version published by a person. And then on the other side, we have the branch and commit information where you can copy the commit SHA. This is the number one piece of data everyone seems to care about that isn't a name, is the commit SHA came from. And then I made it really, really highlighted, um, giving it its own space as to when it was created. Uh, that seems to be how recent something has changed is a big indicator of when it can be helpful. On top of that, for each item, there is also a warning. This warning is our system saying, this package is zero kilobytes, it's probably wrong. This package can't be built by NPM install, maybe something's wrong. And these are very like, I don't want to say idiot checks, but very basic requirements of a package in order to be successful. And if it's not there, we show a warning. The last piece um, that's kind of unique is this vulnerability found. This is um, from the security team that does a sweep of all of the stuff that we upload to the registry and says, this didn't meet a security requirement. It could be a dependent that you use is vulnerable or it could be there's a vulnerability in the code. That's something else we could explore. And then we have this nice pagination function. Whew, that was the fastest I have ever run through a design, which is always very exciting. Um, I actually like to skip questions in this phase. So when it's your turn, and if you have a question, feel free to jump out because it could mean that something I, I designed doesn't work very well. Um, but that's kind of the high level. So I think first up is I volunteered Nico to go first. So Nico, do you have a piece of positive, negative, or neutral feedback? Just yeah. one. Can you just ask to not select the, the red thingy? The red, there is a red line. I suppose that's like the, Oh, I have okay. gotten rid of the red thingy. Thank you. Uh, yeah, first feedback. Um, without the tooltip, I'm not sure what the copy button does. Does it copy the pipeline? Does it copy the chat? Does it copy the full line? That is a great piece of feedback. Um, could I also volunteer Dan because he's really, really good at this? Is there any chance you could add some notes? Maybe. Maybe I'm asking too much. I'm asking too much. All right, I will take notes then. I'm taking notes. I'll take notes for, for everybody as they leave comments and then uh, Dan can keep time and Ian, you could ask questions. Great, team effort. All right, Nico went, he, he rocked it already. First one, it's always difficult. Um, Haley, do you have a piece of feedback? I do. Um, what happens when there's a bunch of different package, like NPM, Maven, Conan, what happens as that expands beyond the space that's provided for them? The so um, Sorry, I'm not so over at the so where it says all packages, then it has npm twenty one, Maven nine, Conan one. Mm -hmm. As there are more and more package managers, what happens if it was to just keep going? Like, what's the overflow for that look like? 
For sure. So GitLab has a feature where you can um, expand a list item that has gone too long, um, which is amazing news for us because that means we have so many package managers there's not enough space for them. Um, but there is a pattern to follow um, that we can definitely implement. And I think I'm okay with kind of passing it off a little bit to that uh, solution because the number of packages a single company produces is reasonably limited even as we expand uh, the number of different package managers that we may include. In so even if we have Conan and something for Python and something for this and something for that, companies will only use two or three of this. For the most part, there's always exceptions. <laughs> yeah, I figure it is just a thought. <laughs> no, that's really important. All right, uh, I don't want to cut people off. So if you're done, Haley, do you want to call out the next person? Who is Nick? Dan, I think we're taking duplicate notes because I, I was taking a little further down just so. Uh, just yeah, so sorry, know. I wasn't looking at the doc. Yes, Nick can go. <laughs> Thanks, team, I'll stop. Oh. Okay, so for me then, is uh, registries the right word on the left-hand side menu? Because I know that we have, um, is it dependency proxy that appears in this list as well? And um, potentially other areas uh, or, or more um, sections could go in there. Uh, and I know there was quite a lot of discussion around whether or not it should be called list. And we settled with list in the end. Uh, so yeah. I am certainly open to feedback here. I've heard from a couple of users that the way it's architected now is confusing. I don't know what the right answer is to move forward. So this can definitely be an open question that we open an issue and really dive into what the correct way to do it, especially considering the dependency proxy as a different unit. So no, to answer your question directly, I do not know if registries is actually the correct way to phrase this. Okay. Uh, so an issue sounds good to me. Um, on to David next. Okay, so uh, I might, uh, well, my brain might be not properly wired for this kind of exercise, but I don't understand why we have the merge request icon on the right side of each package row. Yeah. This right here? Yeah. So I have heard numerous times that the merge request into master or into a specific branch is actually what triggers the CI pipeline generate a new package. Um, I've only heard that a couple of times, so I am very open to changing it, but that's why it is that kind of merge icon as opposed to necessarily a branch or a commit icon. Um, I'm curious if that should actually be flexible depending. So if your CI pipeline is set up in a way that it's triggered on merge, gives you a different icon than just a plain commit to master or um, a unique branch. Okay. That's a really good call out. Um, last tiny thing. I know I just have one shot, but <laughs> I guess you should have a link on the number on the right. Yeah, this one. This right here? Should be a link For sure. to whatever. Yeah, so a GitLab pattern is that when you hover over it, there's a tool set that kind of tells you where the link will take you because it is a little abstract. Um, I'm happy to follow that pattern in the list view. In the detail view, I want to be a little bit more explicit to kind of call out what you're, what you're mentioning is, is it a commit, is it a branch, like what is this thing? Okay, so next one is Tim. Uh oh, I was too busy taking notes. Um, <laughs> can you can you skip me and I'll, I'll go. I'll keep taking notes. For no, sure, no, no. Tim. Tim, I'll take notes while you go. Okay. Go, you get. Um, so I one thing I've noticed in the past with using the different icons, I feel like it looks nice when it comes to design, but then when it comes to actual implementation, it never looks like you like you planned it to on the design, and it can end up looking messy. Um, I was I was just wondering your thought about that, and if we did also like, would we allow them to upload custom uh, icons in here as well, and, and would and would that make it a little bit more this this uniform as well? For sure. When you say icon, are you talking about this like Conan or NPM 
Yeah. Avatar, or are you talking about the icon here? The Conan or NPM or Maven I icons. Definitely. So one of the things I would like to do in the future is allow them to, to give an icon. Uh, this is a pattern that NPM and a couple other registries have of allowing a package to have kind of its own brand identity. Um, if that becomes the case, then we will need to address the fact that outside of that image, the design doesn't tell you what kind of package it is. Um, but when we explore that, we should make an adjustment so it says it could be published NPM package by Ian Camacho, for example. So it is something we should definitely address if it changes. And one other thing, I know I'm only supposed to go once, is uh, what about some kind of like sparkline or something that was showing like how often it was used? I know, I know that's kind of far away from when we could do that, but just from a visual perspective, is that something that you think users would be interested in? Yes, but I don't like it as a design person. And so I'm in conflict. Um, it may create a very, very busy screen, but numerous times to your point, DevOps have come back and said, I want to know how often a package is being used because I'm the person who knows whether it should or should not be being used. And so it is really relevant to be able to look through and be like, all right, this package right here that has the really, uh, that's a little longer in its name shouldn't be used anymore. And to see it at a graphical level could be really helpful. Okay, thanks. On to the next person, who is Steve. Um, yeah, so Tim kind of stole mine. <laughs> I was going to bring up the, <laughs> the logos. Um, I was going to say it could be a good idea. Similarly, you have the verified latest master type labels. Just have a label for the package type there um, as well that just says NPM, Conan, Nathan. Um, Go, Tim. And you, can take, you can take notes, Tim. Go. Sorry. <laughs> Um, but, uh, so one thing that I keep getting caught up in is the, uh, commit and branch information on the right. Um, would that just be blank if that information does not exist? For sure. So I took the approach diving just straight into that question that if they're not building packages on GitLab, we simply surface less information. Um, and the reason I picked that route is if you're not using GitLab to generate your packages, we want you to. And I want to very clearly demonstrate why it's valuable. Um, so you can totally just upload um, a package. And so you'll just be missing some information. So it'll just kind of look boring. What do you think about that? If as a developer, and, and this could go to anybody, but how would you feel if you saw a screen like this where this one doesn't have the information the rest does? I might wonder why. I might wonder, you know, like why doesn't it have that? Like, um, like as someone that works on this, I understand why that information doesn't exist. But as a another as a user, I might just be like, well, how come this one doesn't have that? For sure. Do you think it would be better for you as a developer to have? Uh, would it be better to say information unavailable or just leave it out? Which would enable slash frustrate you more? Uh, maybe less of an information unavailable, but more of a, like, you know, like some sort of like a message that's in place of the information. So that says, you know, package created manually or pa package created something okay. to that extent. Like that's me also not being very good at design and <laughs> just saying no, Oh, that's a really solution where I can't quite break it, but it just says uh, right here, branch and commit unavailable or something like that. So it's very clear, like we could have, it's broken, it's just not there. Yeah. Nice. That is an awesome piece of feedback. Uh, Dan, I believe you're next. Mr. Note Taker, do you want to be skipped because you are a note taker and being amazing about it? No, that's 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 Tim. I don't, I'm not taking credit for Tim's great note taking. That's not fair. <laughs> First piece of feedback. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would say what jumps out to me is particularly uh, GitLab, we love our labels and we label everything with everything we could possibly think of. And that makes for some pretty busy screens but we're partially using labels here and partially not. So if we wanted to have a custom icon, you know, having a label for NPM 
because it was an NVM package, and then you could use standard filtering um, or that we have already built into the site. Uh, we, we've recently added, or recently, I don't know, we've added functionality to disable labels in some areas, like uh, so you could so turn them all off. So in this case, I would wonder whether uh, there'd be some value in, in using labels for the um, package type and using labels more extensively so that it would function the same way as the rest of, or the rest of, a lot of the rest of the user experience on GitLab. Um, that would probably be my feedback because I'm going to want to go click verified and just see the verified stuff. And if we were labeling in traditional label way, I could use that as part of the filter and search on it. Right. So you would suggest kind of bringing up the metadata into these label functions because it's just more intuitive to filter that way. Cause that is the goal is to be able to sort and filter in the way that you can find your package as quickly as possible. Well, I, I wouldn't, I'm not going to try to make an argue about argument about what's intuitive to our users. I think that's not really my, <laughs> my area of expertise. Um, but I would say that we, we have a consistent experience across GitLab where we, you know, use labels extensively to put it politely or maybe too much as some people say, because of why else we have an ability to hide them. Right. So, um, I think that using that model, uh, resolves any concerns we'd have about having custom icon. Um, it gives us the ability to filter them more than just what package type there is. Um, and then it becomes a very familiar UX for people who are used to using GitLab already, where you have the usual box up the top and you can search for labels and all that sort of stuff. Perfect. One of the things I'd like to do is make this filter a little bit more robust to match the search functionality that's on like issues board or um, like all of the different, we have a lot of complex searching, so I'd like to be able to utilize it. Um, so I think we, adding the labels and following that pattern is a good good call out. And we, we're, we're going to be getting, we're investing a fair bit. The search team um, is being built out and, you know, we, we're probably going to end up with more extensive searching, including like not searching and stuff like that. So, you know, if I'm, if I'm an administrator for this, this organization, I can go, I only want to see stuff that has a warning on it. I only want to see stuff that has a security warning and I can just click that and it's a label and then it ends up showing up really easily. Yeah, that's great feedback. I will, I've actually been hesitating to the opposite of that. Um, so it's kind of good to get some feedback that I can abuse, maybe not abuse, I can utilize that a little bit more to show more of the information. So like the fact that it's NPM can kind of yeah. float up to that level. Yeah, I think, I think labels, people aren't necessarily huge fans of how much we use labels or perhaps there are better ways to do it, but it is a model we use pretty consistently at GitLab. So that experience would be at least consistent. Perfect. All and right, at, I think we're that's at five minutes to go or six minutes to go, just by the same. Okay, I think we'll have enough time for one more round if we're fast. And I'm not going to go over time today, like taking the entire session for research. So we're going to do this. Um, has anyone been skipped or can we move on to Nico? Awesome. Monsieur Nico, I believe you next. Okay, so I want to connect what Dan said. I, I try to put myself on the point of view of as a user. Why would I even want to see non-verified stuff? So maybe this list should be like default uh, filter by verified, non, no warning. And then you're able to dig in if you are interested in other stuff. But if I just need to consume a package, why should I download something that doesn't work or something that the maintainer is not sure is correct? That's really cool. I want to explore that idea. I don't have an immediate solution, but that is, you're totally right. If I was a normal user, I just want the verified use this package information. I don't care about all the other available options. That's the good call out. I'm gonna have to play with that. Um, if Nico's done, I think Miss Lely is next. Do you want to pass, Haley? I think you're on mute. Yes, I was. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. All right. Um, so off to the left of the package names, um, you see an image of 
um, that represents the type of package manager. Is mm -hmm. that the most, um, is that the most distinguishing way to tell what kind of package that is? Um, for example, um, just just having the C with the block, if you're not familiar with Conan, you know, is that meaningful to you mm. as a user? Yeah, I definitely worked off the assumption that everyone would know what every icon meant, but now that you brought it up, I've never seen Maven until I worked at GitLab, so I'd have no idea what that icon means. That is a really good and very important call out. Um, it kind of adds to the idea that we should probably have that in either the, the label or, or some other place that very clearly says, this is a component package or this is an NPM package. Yep. Um, maybe, maybe not a label, just as Dan said, we use, we use, we potentially um, overload what a label should be <laughs> um, for a for lot sure. of things. Um, but yeah, um, I'm 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 fine for Nick to take over. <laughs> awesome, thank you, Haley. Uh, okay, then. So two things. Um, at the top, we've got all packages: npm, Maven, and Conan. Uh, should the tabs appear when there's zero packages. So if Maven had zero packages, should should an option to click there exist in that UI, in that piece of UI? So my first assumption is that if there is zero Conan packages, there just wouldn't be a Conan tab. Um, I could be persuaded otherwise, but I'd imagine that hits the, most, the majority of the use cases. Um, I can't imagine a situation where someone needs to know that something doesn't exist necessarily in this kind of this realm. Um, okay, so, so yes, if we added like NuGet and there were zero NuGet packages, it just wouldn't show up as a tab. Okay, so to counter that then, uh, how do we um, make Conan known that it's an option on this screen? That is that exactly the counter argument to why we should not display it is how do we advertise that you could? Um, I don't have a good answer. Tim, do you happen to have an opinion on the spot now that I put you there? I was, when Nick was asking the question, I, I was thinking that we would still show it and then we could have an empty state for the group level view is nice because this is the group level view, I think, right? So I think for the group level view, we could show it and have an, a cool empty state with some like get started documentation. But for the project level view, I think if they're not using Conan and they're using NPM, there's probably not a lot of a chance that they're using NPM and Conan in a given project. So I think I would distinguish it between group and, and project and, and instance probably. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, the second point that I was gonna um, quickly add is that is it worth uh, directly linking to NPM, Maven or Conan from the left-hand side menu? instead of just going to package registry, like can you jump straight to, if all you care about is Conan, can you jump straight to Conan? So as my inner UXer, I would say yes. Immediately provide all things that users need. I wanna jump on that. Um, I have to have a deliberation with uh, Tori. She is in charge of navigation in terms of the design team. And I would imagine we're going to have that exact conversation of, it would be really great if they could just link to the NPM packages from the sidebar. And her response may very well be, uh, that, that's too busy and just clap the water. Um, certainly worth an investigation though. Because I'm sure as a front end developer, as a random example, I would just want to see the NPM packages. I really don't care about the rest of them. I just want the ones that I'm going to work on. Okay, so um, on to David next, if we've got time. We don't. Um, <laughs> so one quick question uh, for packages that are built uh, by a pipeline. Do we display the uh, a pipeline link or a link to the, the pipeline that built it? Yeah, but here, since we, I see the merge request icon, I would assume that it's a link for the merge request and the link for the commit. Am I wrong? Correct. Nope, that is 100% correct. Uh, 
That's a great question. And from what I've heard, users would prefer the pipeline data as opposed to the, the uh, branch, maybe, commit data. Um, so I wonder if this is changing depending on the situation. So if a pipeline built it, we show pipeline and commit. If it's some other situation, we, we demonstrate it differently. Um, that is actually one of the questions I'm going to be asking during the, the round of validation that I'm about to do is, of these two, three, four pieces of available information, which ones actually matter in terms of packages being built? Because I'd imagine the pipeline is actually more useful than this. Yeah, and, and an extension of this question is, is should, do, should we display failed pipelines? So something like, um, I tried to build this package, but the pipeline failed, and here is the link or something, but perhaps it's too much information. Ooh, I would want to explore that. <laughs> it might be too, too much information on just the static page, but maybe on the versions page, um, where we have the, the individual package and all the versions of that package are being displayed, then we can show this one failed, this one failed, this one passed. That could be a really interesting experience for sure. All right, Tim, Steve, and Dan, can you power through some feedback and then we will successfully have done two rounds. Yeah, I, I have one quick thing. So I'm thinking about this is the group level view. I'm not sure which of these are tied to which project. So like, is, there, is that important for me to be able to say, I wanna click on this NPM package name, the top one, and, and go back to the project that it's hosted in? For sure. When I originally built this, I assumed this was the project view of a mono repo that produces many different types of projects. Oh, okay. I think on a project view or a group, or sorry, on a group view or an instance view, we should include what project it came from. Uh, and it, it could float here or it could end up down here. I'm not sure, but I, I agree. I think it should be on the list. Steve? Um, the last thing that I was thinking about was uh, as a user of packages, the common thing that I find myself doing a lot is I'll look for a certain package and then the number one thing I need is like the install command. Um, and like, you know, for example, on NPM, when you go to visit any given page, you can just click and it copies the like NPM install package name. Um, that could be maybe something worth investigating as another copy button on this list is, you know, for any given line, you click the copy button and it copies the like install command or maybe even just the package name. So you can copy and paste it in your gem file or package.json type idea. For sure. One of the things I'm considering is adding a add to project button, similar to how I have it in the detail screen, which you've never seen, which kind of accommodates all of that. Here's the NPM install instructions. Here's the package.json include, um, whatever you need, because exactly what you're saying. Once I find the one I want, I want to know how to add it. All right, we're almost done. Cool. Dan, how fast can you go? Um, I just aware that this takes up a heap of space for each item. So if I'm an organization with like 300 packages, maybe I can filter them uh, down to verified like uh, was suggested earlier. But if I have, you know, 68 verified things that I might like, then how do I figure out what I need next? I mean, the filtering might help there, but, um, you know, we're using two lines for every single one. Is there a minimal view or a, or a or a view where we could include more on a single page? We could certainly create a more dense view of this. However, based on the research that I've done so far, most companies aren't hitting that level um, to where I think it should be a primary concern. It should be something like you've suggested we do with um, filtering and searching, but it's certainly something to consider. And while I do validation, I'll ask is how many packages do you actually end up seeing on this list? Because I could really dictate how much we have to, to accommodate things. Well, I generally just put everything in a condensed view for myself anyway, and that's just the way I work compared to other, you know, like even, even if there's three, this takes up a heap of space on the screen. And so you're, this is a full screen view of a single page in the app. 
Uh, and so right. if we added the filter bar with the labels in it, that would take up some space. Uh, and then you've got fewer things that are physically on the screen, physically <laughs> on the screen. Um, and, you know, so I generally use everything in smaller font and condensed as possible. So that's just my personal view. Yeah, so that's really important. All right, perfect. We did a great job. That's two rounds of feedback so fast as I cut off Dan. Hopefully he, he is. No, you are over, we're over time, so we didn't do a great job. No. We missed our deliverable. <laughs> this, this has a missed deliverable label on it right now. <laughs> no, I was, I'm just trying hard. We should have done okay. a better job iterating. I mean, we would have. <laughs> we should have. All the other times we've done this, we should have fixed this by now. It's so true. All right. Thank you all. That was really, really great feedback. And I think the process of getting feedback was really helpful because everyone got a unique view. I've only consumed most of the time as opposed to all of it. So this is iterative improvement, <laughs> Dan. And so <laughs> I'm very excited. Um, thank you very much for the feedback. And I think somebody else is up now as opposed to just me. Uh, we're almost out of time. We only have a few minutes left, but maybe I could just kickstart this the next topic as um, as an asynchronous conversation. Um, so uh, Haley posted uh, something in our Slack channel the other day. I just wanted to call attention to it that Docker Enterprise was acquired. Um, there's also been some other changes. Uh, key for spelled. I was been min mispronouncing it Quay for my whole time at GitLab, which is super embarrassing. But Key open source their container registry. And uh, if you're familiar with the uh, REPL.IT, they just recently open sourced a universal package manager as well. So there seems like there's a lot of movement in, in the space that we're in and a lot of people moving towards open sourcing this. And I'm just wondering as a team, um, maybe there's something that we could learn from the projects that they open source. Maybe there's something that we can integrate into our platform, or maybe it's just worth a discussion over where um, the industry is going in this sense. And I'm, I'm wondering what's the best way that we can have that conversation and do maybe do that investigation uh, and talk about those things. Is it, is it an, an, an issue or is it one of, in one of these think big meetings? Um, it seems like we'll, we'll want to do some prep. Before we, we have that discussion. Yeah, um, I think key is probably the thing to look at um, because that is, I do believe they have online garbage collection, which is our big, um, which is a really big goal for us. And I don't know if that's, I think part of that consideration is like, what does it mean just to use key? Is that is that like the quickest, fastest, most boring way to solve our problem? And what is what would the transition over um, look like? And what would I do here? <laughs> but um, yeah, hashtag because it's written in Python. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I think we, I think that's definitely probably worth an issue, just so that we can. I think that's kind of like a, a thing that's going to have a lot of guard, like paths to go down. So probably just a, 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 its own separate issue to discuss what we could do about that would be my s instinct on that. Okay, cool. Yeah, I really I like that idea a lot. Maybe it could we can have a way of sort of time boxing an investigation and and doing it that way. Um, I don't know that the REPL uh, open source project really applies to us, but there might be some learnings that we could take just in terms of how they've abstracted away some of the functionality. Like it really is just, you can install any package with like a common framework. So I really like that idea. Um, okay, so I, maybe I'll open up some team issues to talk about it. It seems like the best way and we could, or actual issues. Yeah, open actual issues on this. Okay. We could get a lot of valuable feedback from people on this. That's subject, a good idea. Okay, yeah, so I'll, I'll open up a, a, a few of those. Uh, and I know Ian and I have, um, have talked about evaluating GitHub's package registry as well and doing some competitive analysis. So maybe it's worth opening that issue as, as well. Yeah, I think, I think the one thing I wanna call out on, on evaluating at this point different alternatives to Docker distribution registry is the, um, I think it's I think it's worth looking at key to see what they're doing and and to determine whether that could be useful. 
I think the, the concern there is evaluating that against how much effort would be required to add this to our existing solution. Um, this would be in call, in installing a whole new system using a language that only Maltano is using for the most part inside GitLab. Um, so the, the, the ability to support that across the team would be relatively limited, at least early on. I mean, there, I'm sure there are plenty of people that know some Python at some level, um, but there are a lot of other sort of organizational slash support level considerations there. Um, and then the other big red flag I have in my head around that is migrating all of our existing packages from what we have to that. So far, we've been able to just do upgrades in place with the changes that we've been, been able to make so far with the, uh, our implementation of Container Registry. Having a whole new system means migrating uh, and building code and functionality to migrate uh, customer packages from one to the next. And then it's a local install, which has to be verified for our on-premise or self-hosted people. Um, so I think there are a bunch of considerations that um, would have me sort of going, okay, I wanna have a really good reason why this is valuable, uh, why a good reason why this would actually be the way we wanna go. I'm not saying I'm going to block it at all. I, think that's, I don't think that's really my role. I just want to flag those things for people to think about as we're considering these options. That makes sense. Uh, totally. I think when Haley and I talked about key, we were saying, well, maybe we could just see what they're doing, like see how they've architected it. And, and that, I think that could still be. A, yeah, a, super interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like totally worth it. And that's like you said with REPL, uh, see how other people are trying to solve the problem. And I mean, I think ultimately, whether we go with one open source solution around another one, I would want to make sure we can contribute back to it because that's been a bit of a pain point for us with some of the open source uh, initiatives that we're trying to, we use and want to contribute back to. It doesn't, it's not always super easy to do that. And in that case, it means that we can't actually implement fixes or like features that we want to implement. So that's actually kind of restrictive. And we're working on that, by the way, just for everyone watching out in the rest of the <laughs> the rest of the internet um, but like we're working on that effort uh, so definitely something we want to consider as we're evaluating other open source options um, let's make it better if we can and if we can't that's kind of like okay well then should we just build it ourselves well said thanks dan i think that's we went a few minutes over on time but thank you everyone uh, as always i really appreciated this and uh i'll talk talk to you soon thanks